Welcome to Hatfield's 2017 Candidates Forum. I'm Joe Lavalle, your town moderator. Each year, this program is intended to give candidates a chance to inform town members of their platform, position, and intentions if re-elected or elected. First, however, it's always good to share a little bit about our town. The population of Hatfield is approximately 3,200 residents. We occupy about 16 square miles. We have one of the smallest and finest independent public school systems in the state, as well as some of the best farms on the East Coast. We were settled in 1661, and we follow what's called Open Town Meeting, which is our form of governance using town rules since 1670, when our first town meeting was held just over 345 years ago. To learn more about our town, please go to Hatfield's various websites. A lot of our history is well documented and continually added to. Each candidate will have up to 10 minutes to make a statement. The contested positions up for election this year are on the Board of Selectmen, a two-year term to fill Jeff Boyle's seat. And running for this position are Fran Goodgen, Cindy Doty, and Gerald Gower. Brian Moriarty is up for re-election as well, running unopposed for a three-year term. The winner would serve along with Ed Jaworski. On the Board of Assessors, it's a two-year term. Scott McCoy is up for re-election, and Chris Smith is running for this position. For the School Committee, a three-year term. There are two open positions. Kathy Englehart is up for re-election, and Bridget Rodriguez is running for the other position. For Town Collector, a three-year term, Laura Lee Druin is up for re-election, and Mike Poshik is running for this position. For Town Treasurer, a th another three-year term, Laura Lee Druin is up for re-election for this position as well, and Mike Poshik is also running for this position. The unopposed positions you'll be asked to elect are as follows. On the Board of Health, a three-year term, Carrie Flaherty is running for re-election. The elector under the will of Oliver Smith, a one-year term, Lydia Zish is running for re-election. Cemetery Commission, a three-year term, Jonathan Bardwell is running for re-election. On the Board of Assessors, a three-year term again, Ron Punska is running for re-election. For library trustee, a two-year term, there are two positions open. Amy Guklowski and Marsha Humphrey. Marsha's up for re-election. On the planning board, a five-year position, Paul Dostal is running for re-election. For town clerk, a three-year term, Lydia Zish is up for re-election. And finally, as town moderator, a three-year term, is myself, Joe Lavalley, running for re-election. This is my 15th year serving you in this position and would like to say thank you for your trust and confidence. There's a few open positions with no candidates. Redevelopment Authority, a five-year position, and Planning Board, a four-year position. Write-ins are always welcome, allowed, and accepted. To the candidates, we thank you for your commitment and candidacy to our town government, it's your participation that makes our town operate at its best. It's most welcome and greatly appreciated. Lastly, I'd like to again thank John Novak for putting this forum together each year. Now here are the candidates' statements running for the various boards and offices starting with the Board of Assessors. Hi, I'm Scott McCoy. I'm running for the opposed assessor seat. I just wanted to uh, give you a brief uh, look at who I am and uh, um, explain a little bit about myself. I uh, grew up in Northampton, Massachusetts, uh, graduated high school there, um, lived there for most of my life. Uh, after I graduated high school, I went into the U.S. Army. I'm a veteran of the U.S. Army. Uh, once I did my wonderful three years with the Army, I, I came out and uh, came back to the area where I went to uh, Westfield State College received my uh, Bachelor of Science in Criminal Justice. From there, I've uh, made my way around, um, worked for many Fortune 500 companies, um, Blue Rhino, the propane company, Staples, and whatnot. 
but um, most recently uh, came back to town. I've been working for a fertilizer company right here in Hatfield. I've been with them for over a year and a half, um, previously with them too for 12 years in my earlier life. Um, it's a national fertilizer company. I'm the uh, general manager for them. I run the entire operation there in Hatfield. I also am in charge of all their operations for the Northeast. Um, my wife and I, uh, Karina Hanlon, who is a longtime resident here, uh, we have three wonderful children who uh, go to the school system here in uh, Hatfield. Um, so we're very, we try to be very involved in the community. Um, recently, about a year and a half ago, I joined the Recreation Committee here in town. Uh, we've done wonderful things here in town with the Recreation Committee. Uh, a couple big points, we were able to bring back the soccer, or excuse me, the softball field behind uh, the center school. Um, we were very excited about that to bring some more girl sports back to the community. We've also um, extended the summer camp, which is a key point for families here in town. Um, before, the summer camp was only a half-day summer camp, so we were able to provide a full solution for families, and now it's a you-can-choose half-day or full-day, so that's very exciting. But or Also, we've... Um, We've created an online website for the Rec Committee so people can go on the website and see what upcoming events they have and um, you can register online. That's another big point. Uh, instead of running all your paperwork and, and whatnot, uh, you can register right online through, uh, through our website which has gotten great feedback from the families in town. So with that, I just wanted to give you a brief understanding of who I am, the things I've been doing in the community. Um, and, and what involvement I have up to this point. I've been the interim assessor for, I think a little less than a year. There was a seat open and I applied for it and been doing it. I've been working with Ron, Stan and Jen for, uh, for that year and uh, it's been a great experience for myself. Um, very excited to keep that going um, and uh, see what I can do going forward. Uh, I, I hope this kind of gives you a brief understanding of who I am, where I've come from, what I've, I've done so far for the town of Hatfield. Uh, just knowing if you vote for me, you'll, I'm one that will give 100% to, to everything that I do, uh, focused primarily just making sure that the town of uh, Hatfield citizens get what they want and uh, uh, most importantly, that the town of Hatfield just prospers. So with that said, uh, look forward to your vote on the 16th, and we'll see everybody at the uh, town election. Hi, I'm Ron Punska. I'm running un unopposed for the Board of Assessors. I'm a Hatfield native, graduate of Smith Academy, graduated from AIC, spent 35 years in the banking industry. I've always been active in the community, whether it's been in East Hampton, Mass, Washington, New Jersey, and moving back to Hatfield in 92. I've served uh, on various committees such as Recreation Committee, Little League Board of Directors, School Committee, and in town I've served as a selectman and an assessor. Going forward, I would really appreciate your vote to the board. There's also a second assessor's position open. It's Scott McCoy is opposed by Christopher Smith. Scott is an Army vet, college grad, has three children in a school. His wife, incidentally, is the granddaughter of Stanley Marcinowski, who is our longtime building inspector. Scott has served the past six months on an interim basis and appointment and is hoping to serve full time on a board of assessors and I would really appreciate it if you would vote for him. Thank you. Hello Hatfield. Uh, my name is Christopher Smith. I'm running for the uh, two year unexpired term for the board of assessors. I've lived in Hatfield for 40 years and began my public service on the Energy Committee. Prior to being an assessor in 1996, I served on the Industrial Development Commission, uh, the Open Space Committee, 
and the Cultural Council uh, and worked on the first and second uh, uh, master plans in 1987 and 2001. I uh, served as an assessor until 2012, during which time I completed the entire course of training offered by the state to be an assistant assessor. And that includes uh, appraisal of real estate and personal property asset assessment. Uh, regardless of whether or not I become elected uh, as your next assessor, um, I am happy to help any Hatfield resident with uh, at no charge if they feel their property is not properly assessed or if you simply want to understand how your property assessment uh, has been figured. I can be reached at my business at Hatfield Printing and Publishing, uh, celebrating 43 years in the Pioneer Valley. As a member of the Hatfield Redevelopment Authority for the last two years, I am most proud of saving the former center school uh, across the street from the town hall that will soon be converted to age 55 and over condos. Thanks to your community support, this beautiful historic building will remain an icon of the town center, bringing an estimated $45,000 in new tax revenue and save you, the taxpayer, $400,000 in demolition costs. Speaking of elderly, uh, did you realize that more than 100 residents turned 60 years of age this past year? If elected, I would like to look at revising our town's elderly exemption so more older folks, many on fixed incomes, can afford to stay in their homes in Hatfield. In addition, the Redevelopment Authority has offered to help the Council on Aging uh, find a new location should they determine uh, in the near future, perhaps, uh, that they've outgrown the, the uh, basement town in, in the town hall. Finally, uh, I, as I ask for your vote, I would work if elected to bring back the financial team to better coordinate and manage our town finances and capital planning. The financial team included selectmen, finance committee, assessors, uh, collector, treasurer, and accountant who met periodically throughout the year. And uh, this forum of communication was a useful tool for budget and planning up to 2012 when it was discontinued and proved to be a creative and insightful uh, advantage, especially during financial difficult times, something we as a smaller town will likely need to contend with in the future, considering Hatfield has lost 13% in local aid this year and may lose even more next year. Um, so I thank you for listening, uh, and don't forget uh, that town meeting is May 9th, this coming Tuesday, and town election is on May 16th, the Tuesday following the town meeting. Thank you. Hello everyone, and thank you for tuning in today and listening to what the candidates have to say. My name is Laura Lee Bertram, and I'm running for re-election for the town treasurer and town collector positions. I would like to take a moment and talk about a few changes that have occurred since the last election. One is that I have moved our accounts payable and payroll accounts to East Hampton Savings Bank. The town is receiving improved interest rates in most months, it is double what we were receiving previously. The Treasurer's Office has also implemented remote deposit capture. 
This technology allows us to capture deposits at the town hall and eliminates the need to transport checks to the bank. The treasurer's office has also implemented a townwide cash management system that is in use by all departments in the town hall, including the police, fire, and school departments. This software has improved and streamlined the departmental receiving of monies, including allowing a fully reconcilable electronic turnover of funds from each department to the town treasurer's office, while improving the treasurer's office with concise audit trail to track the town's receipts. Both the treasurer and collector's office has great news to report on collections. Back taxes on the collector side is extremely low, with most taxpayers that are not at a current state being in a proactive monthly payment plan with a payoff in three years or less. On the treasurer side, I have collected over three quarters of a million dollars in tax title money in the past two years. The town's current tax title consists primarily of owner unknowns and abandoned property that I am working on conducting air searches and also of contaminated properties that I'm working with DEP on. Collection rates are also doing quite well. Real estate is typically between 97 and 98% collected by the due date and typically over 99% by the close of the fiscal year. Water and sewer collection rates have also improved. By moving the due dates to November and May 1st, we have been able to hit over 92% collection by the close of the fiscal year on June 30th. This is an improvement from 78 to 83% prior to changing the due date to November and May 1st. This change has played a key factor in assisting the Water and Sewer Enterprise Fund to remain out of deficit and in the black by the close of the fiscal year on June 30th. I want you to know that it has been my pleasure to serve you as town treasurer and collector, and I thank you for your support in the last election. I hope I have an opportunity to serve you as town treasurer collector in the future, and I ask for your support in voting for me on May 16th. Hello, I'm Michael Poshuk. I live at 3 Prospect Street with my wife, Ellen, and my daughter, Jenna. I'm running for the position of treasurer and collector. As they are two separate positions, I am asking you to cast two votes for me. In opening, I would like to state that for lack of a better way of putting it, I'm a Hatfield Town guy. I have many shared experiences with everyone that lives in town. I lived here all my life. I was the second person in Hatfield to receive the Eagle Scout Award. I attended the Brewer Elementary School and Smith Academy, and I attended St. Joseph's Church. I worked my way through college, working for my, my uncles on the Boyle Farm in the summers and working for the Soslowski Farm in the fall and winter. I have also served the community in volunteer positions for over 40 years. I can still remember as a child hearing John Kennedy's inaugural address and his ask not what your country can do for you, but ask what you can do for your country. I have always taken that to heart and I have applied it to the service of my community. Over the 40 years, I have been a member of the Conservation Commission the Zoning Board of Appeals, including the Chair, the Finance Committee, the Capital Planning Improvement Committee, including the Chair, the School Committee, and the School Building Committee, including the Chair. My education and work experience. For my undergraduate education, I attended the University of Massachusetts School of Management and studied finance and accounting. I also did additional study in finance at Northeastern University. Currently, I am pursuing a master's degree in business administration at the Eisenberg School at the University of Mass. In my business career, I have worked with a number of small and family businesses 
in the capacity of finance, accounting, and general management, both in Western Mass and in Boston. The bulk of my career to date was spent founding and managing a medical practice with my wife. We started in Northampton, then expanded to Hadley and West Springfield. During the almost 20 years of operation, after the initial startup phase, of which I developed the business plan and secured the financing, I was responsible for all aspects of managing the business, including the accounting and financial functions, human resources, billing and collections, cash management and accounts payables, marketing, contract negotiation, and just about any other non-medical responsibility. I also had to work with our CPA firm, our attorneys, and on occasion with federal, state, and local officials. During the almost 20 years we were operational, we had a successful business that we had to close when both my wife and I developed health issues. The management of town finances is a very complicated and technical process with a number of different roles and responsibilities, much too detailed to try to discuss thoroughly now. A very basic description of the two positions I am running for could be described as follows. The role of treasurer is responsible for the management of the cash budget of the town, which developed in conjunction with the finance committee and the Board of Selectmen and approved by the town meeting. The cash budget is developed on an annual basis and is the guiding document for the financial obligations of the town. The treasurer is also responsible for investment of the idle cash in town accounts until it is needed for paying of town obligations. The treasurer is also responsible for the management of the long-term debt of the town and securing new long-term financing when capital projects and other obligations require it. The role of town collector is to bill and collect monies owed to the town by statute on things such as real estate, excise, permits, and fees. The collector is also responsible for keeping accurate, an accurate record system and to record and deposit payments in a timely manner. My inclusion of these brief descriptions of these two positions was to reference back to my own work experience. In our business, my role and responsibilities were very similar to what I would have to do as treasurer and collector. Maintain a cash budget, pay financial obligations, forecast future cash needs, bill and collect funds owed to the town, and manage short and long-term financial obligations. Why am I running for these positions, you may ask. First, I have to say that I am not a political person. While I do have my own political views, I view this opportunity as another way for me to serve my community. That being said, running for public office is a very humbling experience. Asking, for, asking people for their vote in support of your candidacy, candidacy is a serious proposition. You have to have spent some time considering are you worthy of their trust. After much consideration, I believe I am worthy of your vote. I'm running, I am running because I believe I have acquired over my life through my educational experiences and my practical work experiences a set of skills that I can apply to managing the finances of the town. I believe that I will do an excellent job for the community as town treasurer and collector. It is fairly common knowledge to anyone paying attention to what is happening in our town government that the operation of the financial offices within the town government are in disarray and have been for a number of years. I believe that if elected, I will be able to use my skills to over time get our financial house in order. What will I do? My goals for the financial management of the town will be as follows. First, respect the taxpayer and provide quality service both within the treasurer's and collector's departments. 
work diligently to keep expenses low, and work with all the other town departments to do the same. Work to keep a high collection ratio on financial obligations owed to the town. Be innovative and creative, always seeking better, more cost-effective methods for operating town government. Forecast and plan using current analytical techniques to develop a minimum three-year financial plan that can be used by the Selectmen Finance Committee and other departments in developing the annual town budget. Have the Board of Selectmen adopt a set of financial guidelines that I have already developed that would ensure consistency and stability in the budgeting process and establish required benchmarks to achieve in the stabilization fund. Again, I am running for two positions, that of treasurer and collector, and I'm asking to you for two votes. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is Bridget Rodrigue, and I'm excited to be running for a seat on the Hatfield School Committee. Some of you may know me from my time on the Recreation Committee. For those of you who do not know me, here's a little bit about my background. I grew up in Eastern Massachusetts, but have always had ties to Western Mass through extended family living in Northampton. I enjoyed many visits to this area as a child and chose to attend Smith College, where I majored in education and child study. While at Smith College, I was able to work in a number of this area's public schools, both as a student teacher and a substitute. After graduation, I returned to Smith College and completed a master's degree program in elementary education. I taught in the public school system before getting married and starting a family. I currently have two children in the Hatfield Public Schools. I have been continually impressed with the music and engineering programs. It is always a delight to attend school music concerts and my youngest daughter is excited and engaged with her engineering class. I am currently working in municipal government and I believe this balance of education and work experience has prepared me for the role of a school committee member. I am inspired to work with members of the committee to support the schools and promote innovation and growth. If elected, I look forward to collaborating with the committee and superintendent as we continue to move the Hatfield Public Schools forward. Thank you. My name is Brian Moriarty and I am a candidate for re-election to the Hatfield Board of Selectmen. I'd like to start by thanking John Novak for the opportunity to address you, the residents of Hatfield, via our local cable station. This election year I have no opponent, but felt nonetheless it was important to still say a few words to the residents. So instead of a candidate speech, I thought I will take this opportunity to provide you some updates on some town projects and other happenings within our community. The center school project is a go with the developer. Both the town and developer are awaiting the final legal verbiage of the sale agreement to be finalized by our respective legal counsels. We expect to have everything signed, sealed, and delivered next month. The architect for Town Hall Phase 2 has been hired, so the design of the fire suppression system and handicapped accessibility is underway. Remember, this phase is part of the agreed upon terms the town made with the state and we are committed to being compliant. We hope to have a feasibility study completed soon, which would include the Council on Aging, Museum, and Cable TV, and a way forward for the completion of our Town Hall phased renovations. A new police chief has been selected to replace Chief Tom Osley, who will be retiring in just a few short weeks. Hatfield Police Lieutenant Mike DeKoshak was selected from an initial pool of 30 applicants to become our new police chief. Enjoy your retirement, Tom. Capital improvements, always important and often expensive, continue to be prioritized and brought forward to the townspeople for discussion and approval. Infrastructure projects, such as our water and sewer systems, are always a priority. Our schools, the Hatfield Elementary School and Smith Academy, continue to be a destination for regional students and their families because of our dedicated teachers and staff, educational programming, 
extracurricular activities, and top-notch facilities. Our community always does a great job in supporting our local school district. We will be celebrating our town's 350th celebration in 2020. I would ask that you contact the town secretaries if you wish to be part of a committee to plan this awesome milestone. I personally envision a number of events leading up to the big birthday bash and parade. So the more community members able to volunteer in some capacity during the planning stages, the better. Ideas and suggestions are welcome. I'm looking forward to having the Board of Selectmen back to three members with the Selectmen's race on the ballot to fulfill the remaining two years of Jeff Boyle's term. In that contested race, I would hope you, the Hatfield voters, will vote for the candidate which you feel has the background, temperament, and personality to work as part of our three-member Board of Selectmen team to make decisions on your and the town's behalf. In closing, I'd like to thank the men I have had the good fortune of serving with on the Board of Selectmen these last three years. Ed Lesko, Pat Gaughan, Jeff Boyle, and my current colleague, Ed Jaworski. All of these gentlemen have put in the time and effort to help make Hatfield the town it is today. Hatfield is a community we can all be proud of. So, thank you for watching and please vote May 16th for your candidates for the various offices that are on the ballot. Thank you. Good afternoon, my name is Cindy Doty. I am running for the open seat on the select board this year. Uh, I'd first like to thank John Novak for contacting me yesterday and the other candidates and telling us we had an opportunity to give a brief statement as to why we're running. Um, this is my first run at public office in the town. I am a lifelong resident, I was born here, I was raised here, graduated from Smith Academy, I uh, chose to stay here. Um, I currently live on Main Street with my husband, Mike Volpe. We raised our two children there. Uh, my youngest is graduating this month, moving out, moving up north. So even though I've wanted to do this for a few years, um, this seemed like the time to do it. I'll have a little bit more time and I didn't want to do it previously and try to run for the select board if I couldn't give the proper time and do it right. So now seems like a good time for me to do it. I don't have a specific um, one cause agenda or anything like that. I like this town, I've worked in this town, I've lived in this town, I like to contribute to it. Um, I have previously served on the Energy Commission, I've served on the Rec Committee for five years, uh, volunteering with the kids' sports, I've volunteered in the elementary school all the years my children were there. I've been on the Emergency Management Committee. Uh, the last six and a half years I've been the Director of Emergency Management for the town. I work as a constable here in Hatfield. I, along with the emergency management work that I do, I'm also the representative to the Hampshire County Emergency Management Planning Committee, which meets monthly in Hadley. I represent the town at MEMA, which is the Massachusetts Emergency Management Agency down in Agawam quarterly. Um, that's a very good relationship for the town. They offer a lot of training, a lot of support, uh, a lot of things in time of emergency and just general direction and resources. So I'd like to continue that. Um, I'm limited to about four hours a week in emergency management, but the last few years I've uh, taken it upon myself to do a special project each year. Uh, this year I'm working on the debris plan, which I'd hoped to have ready for town meeting. It won't be due to the census figures and, and the, uh, the training uh, part of, portion of uh, coming up with this plan isn't until June, which was scheduled by Homeland Security. Last year I wrote a bylaw, which was approved by town meeting. Uh, that was regarding hazardous materials, should an accident happen in Hatfield re related to a hazmat vehicle, etc. We used to be able to go after the insurance company, which would take months. Using this bylaw that was patterned, that I learned about through me, which was patterned after a lot of the cities out east. Uh, now if something like that happens, anything from home heating oil, gasoline, to anything more serious, uh, we can go after, because town meeting approved this bylaw, we can go after that company directly and they're required to pay the town what they owe them for the damages within 30 days. In addition to that, and instead of waiting months and months for the insurance payment, they are also responsible to pay for any costs incurred for the response, such as the police officers doing uh, traffic, the fire department washing down or putting out a fire, um, anything to do with the hazmat incident as it happened. Uh, the prior year, um, myself and Chief Belden 
reviewed what we had as our emergency reverse 911 call program. We decided it wasn't fitting our needs. They weren't responsive. They weren't returning calls, emails, etc. I researched it. We went to the Code Red program, which has proved to be a much better match for us. It is much more in depth. They give us free training, online training. They offer things such as when we'd want to do a reverse 911 or emergency call to all the townspeople, we can do it remotely from our phones. Uh, they have training webinars. They've also offered assistance to track all the hazardous materials in towns from the different companies located here, Helena, the Turf Care, uh, the Fertilizer Place, CNS. It's a much better program, and they've also guaranteed us that the price will never go up as long as we are with them. It's the same fee every year. So um, learning about different town functions, working through that position for six and a half years, working with the accounting departments, all the other departments in the town hall, I think it's given me a good background and prepared me. I look at the Board of Selectmen as it now sits. I think um, I would be a good fit to balance that board out. Uh, you have Mr. Javorski, who has a background in management. Uh, he has a background in the trades. He worked at UMass, retired from there for many years. Mr. Moriarty has a background with the school committee. He is very knowledgeable about the schools. I think I bring a different perspective, represent a different group in town, uh, different committees in town perhaps, with my emergency services background. Um, I've been in law enforcement for over 30 years, uh, starting with the House of Correction where I worked, uh, the town of Amherst Police Department, and then went on to the state police for another 25 years, which gave me a lot of supervisory experience, management experience. Uh, I've written policy and procedure, rules and regulations, enforced them, enforced the laws. I've uh, achieved my EMT status. I'm also a certified tactical EMT, so I've had the medical service background, and I spent a number of years counseling firefighters, police officers, and EMS personnel in the New England states. So it gives me a different perspective. I think that would help balance out our select board and represent more people there. I encourage all people to be represented here in town, and what I'd really like to see um, whether I'm on the select board or not, no matter how it works out, I'd like to see more people attend the town meeting. It's May 9th at 7 p.m. Last year, we didn't even have 200 people there. There's almost 2,400 voters. I work as a constable in town. I see how many people come through to uh, vote each election, and it's not a lot. In two hours, once a year, so many things are decided for the town, and to have your voice heard by voting or even speaking is very important. Less than 10% of the voters are deciding where all our money goes, what decisions are made, which affect the town for many years to come. The following week, May 16th, encourage everybody to vote, no matter who you vote for. Polls open at 7 a.m. May 16th. It's very important. That's the way you have to convey what your thoughts and your opinions and what your voice is to the rest of the town. I'd like to look at several things, should I be elected, um, again, I'm not looking at one thing to change, just to make every department, every little committee, everything just a little better than it was. And I think I have the overview to do that. I don't have a personal agenda. I, know, oh, I don't owe anyone anything. No one owes me anything. I don't owe anyone a position, money, or anything else. Um, I'm coming in with a clean slate, looking just to make things a little better. I've been doing a lot of research over the last few months. Uh, one of the things I'd like to look at, which I actually brought up at town meeting about eight years ago, we had a representative from the COG, the Council of Governments for Hampshire County, at town meeting. I asked her about um, what benefits we were getting for our membership here. And the only thing that they really responded to was we were getting salt in bulk, which helped. Here we fast forward eight years later, uh, last year, we paid, we bought our gasoline for town vehicles through them. We paid $3.90 a gallon for gas for our town vehicles. We had a $10,000 contract. We only used about eight. We didn't get to that 10, but we already had another $10,000 contract for the following year. Uh, any local station is selling it for about two and a quarter right now per gallon. I think we can do better. I think we can research that and do much better. Uh, our technology contract, okay, I've read the, through the COG also, I've read that we're saving $400 a year, but $400 of what? Uh, there's been a lot of town members who spoke up, which I think is really good. You know, maybe it is our best deal, maybe it's not. I think we can look at that, save money there. Uh, they wanted to shut us down when we had uh, bad weather. 
to shut us down because they said it was easier for them to repair it if something went wrong. That's when we need it. If we declare a state of emergency, that's how we communicate with MEMA to let them know whether we need water, sandbags, equipment, an extra bulldozer, and also so they can keep track of all the towns. If it's a flood situation, everybody's on that web EOC coming down the Connecticut River, so we know what Greenfield's doing, we know what Deerfield's situation is, Waitley, us, and that's when they want to shut us down. I checked with the larger towns in the area. They weren't shut down. We have a lot of duplication I'd like to see um, where we could save a little bit money here and there. I'd love to sit down with the CPA um, we're at the highest tax rate that the state allows right now with that, 3%. Some towns have zero, some one and a half. I know, I would like to learn from them. I know we get matching funds. Can we maybe do a percent and a half for a couple years? We have 1,200 households approximately in town. 880 of those are headed by a senior citizen. Many of those are on fixed incomes. Water, sewer, and now this extra 3% tax, they're, they're all very high and they add up for people. Some people are having difficulty paying them. Um, another duplication we have is we have a tree warden fund, we have a tree canopy fund, basically they're to buy trees for the town. I think we only need one, maybe combine them, maybe get rid of one. I would like to see things like the town manager be giving, excuse me, the town administrator be giving more authority to kind of run the town hall. She's here all the time or whoever's in that position. Um, we need somebody to drive that train. The select board isn't here every day. The person in that position is. Um, customer service is always really important in a small town because everybody has an opinion, everybody has a complaint. Uh, when I was, uh, there were several other things. I think we're coming up on 10 minutes, so I just um, would like to close. I'm looking at being fair and honest to someone. When someone asked me for, uh, regarding another position in town, they tell me, geez, you should do this. I know you'll be fair and honest. And I said, absolutely, but not everybody likes fair and honest. Um, I still believe that most people do. And like I said, I have no agenda. I'm open to everyone's opinion. I just want to make things a little better. And no matter who you vote for, please vote on the 16th. Thank you very much. Hello, my name is Fran Goodgen, and I have lived with my wife, the former Mitch Stefancic, at 29 Primrose Path since 1966. Our three children, who attended Hatfield schools, are now grown and have children of their own. I'm running for the Board of Selectmen in order to continue to be of service to our community, which is something I started when I was elected to the school committee in the early 1980s. This was followed by my appointment as Hatfield Superintendent of Schools in 1986, a position that I held until 1993. I later returned as interim superintendent in 2009 to 2010. My experience as a superintendent of schools was important because it taught me that it is necessary to listen to the people you serve in order to make good informed decisions, something I will continue to do if elected selectman. For the past six years, I have served on the finance committee the Capital Improvement Planning Committee, and the Personnel Committee. And during this time, I also chaired search committees for town administrator, fire chief, and police chief. My experience has given me a good working knowledge of town government, and if elected, I look forward to continuing to be involved in the completion of important projects going forward. For example, Completion of phase two town hall renovation, which is uh, ready to go out to bid in September. And secondly, the rebuilding of the town hall front steps, something that is not on the re renovation plan, but is absolutely necessary at this point. Anyone who has visited the town hall recently has some idea of the very poor condition of the steps and the fact that it's now become a safety hazard. Uh, the replacement of the steps is something that we included in the capital improvement plan and we're hopeful that uh, that uh, is funded and we are able to go forward with that project. The other important point to be made here is that the steps are going to be the main uh, entrance and egress to the building during the phase two uh, renovation or reconstruction phase. 
Completion of phase two of the new water line uh, is another project uh, that is uh, in need of our support. Uh, the phase two water line runs from the railroad tracks on Chestnut Street to Gore Avenue. And it's critical at this phase that this phase be completed uh, in a timely fashion because a break in the old pipe that is being replaced could leave us in a very difficult situation. Completion of a feasibility study to determine how the space and programming needs as presented to us by the Council on Aging will be met now and in the future. Also completion of an assessment of our financial offices, namely treasurer, collector, and accountant, to determine where changes and improvements in keeping with best practices might need to be made. We suspect that there are some inherited problems with regard to these offices, as well as questions regarding the adequacy of staffing, as well as the need for some additional training uh, is, uh, is something that uh, we feel needs attention. Uh, I would like to thank you all for listening to my presentation, and I would also like to thank John and the Community Television for broadcasting uh, this presentation. Hello, my name is Gerald Gower. I'm running for selectman in here in Hatfield. I've lived in Hatfield for approximately seven years. I have a good background in history of what it takes to be a selectman. I know Hatfield is kind of a quaint, quiet town, and they have their ways on doing things. And that's what I like about the town. My background is I've been at in the United States Marine Corps. And I've, I've worked many things. I've had many businesses I've opened up throughout the years. Um, built, financed my own restaurants. Uh, did some uh, chemical engineer work for hazardous waste, underground storage tanks. I've also been a director for UMass Medical Center. Um, I was on a budget committee in New Hampshire for uh, only three months, and then I resigned. I worked for the Whateley Diner probably for about seven years as assistant manager or manager. Uh, but Hatfield, talking about Hatfield, it's, I want to be part of a process so I can be part of the outcome in Hatfield. Participating in discussions to help Hatfield, a healthy and more efficient town. I think I have that capability. I'm not argumentative and kind of think from outside the box. And since I asked where I'm coming from, I'd like to stay there outside the box, but be a good part of Hatfield. Their traditions are outstanding. And the stuff they do is quite right. But I do believe that every town can benefit by either changing slightly on how they do stuff, maybe at town hall, maybe at some of the work sites, and how they spend their money. To me, the money is the biggest. Um, of course, nobody wants to see taxes go up. If we had no taxes, everyone would be happy. But you can't please everybody. So I'm not looking to make changes in Hatfield, but would like to see it work better. It's, it's time for changes in Hatfield. 
not big ones. Hatfield is a, like I say, quiet town with great history. Great history is all kinds of people, all kinds of ethnic groups, whatever. But we need to have changed sometimes in politics. Who's taking office? Who's doing this? Who's doing that? How it's being done? And that's the part I want to take place, take part in. I, I just want to be able to give my voice and help out the best I can on things that happen in Hatfield. And again, my background is, is quite intense and quite, what well, can I put it, um, diverse. So by coming here to Hatfield is roughly where my wife is close to and I always wanted to move here. And that's one reason I ended up coming. Like other people I know, um, their traditions, absolutely outstanding. But like I say, there's always room for us to make small changes, nothing big. And that's what I'm gonna stand for. Anybody needs, needs me, I'm always available, always. I don't think there'll be a time where somebody cannot get a hold of me either by phone or in person at home. So if, you're, if you think that I have a possibility of being your candidate for selectmen, I urge you to vote for Gerald Gower. I would be the one that you would probably appreciate and be able to talk to. Cut. This concludes the candidate statements. Voting at the polls takes place May 16th. Remember to vote. Thank you for watching.